Hello and welcome. I'm Lynn Gurdon. I'm a 20-year resident of Shrewsbury, a town meeting member, community advocate, engineer, and local realtor. Today, we have the opportunity to chat with Paul Campanello about his bid for Shrewsbury Housing Authority. Hello, Paul. Welcome. Hi, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule to do this with me. I appreciate it. I also want to thank the Shrewsbury Media Connection for hosting us to have these few minutes together as well. So thanks. Well, Paul, we're here tonight to talk about your bid for re-election to Shrewsbury Housing Authority. Maybe it makes sense for you to talk a little bit more about yourself. Sure. It makes a ton of sense. I'd love to. For those that don't know me, I've lived in this community my whole life. I'm a product of Shrewsbury Public Schools as well as St. John's. In terms of my professional background, I've held several senior executive roles at a variety of Boston-based technology startup companies for the last 25 years. I've helped bring some of those companies from very small technical operations to large publicly held companies. So um, I've been very fortunate to work for some really successful companies and manage great teams of people and manage a lot of budgets and things like that every day as part of what I do for my day job. Far more importantly, I've been married for 15 years to my wonderful wife, Deb. I have two great kids. Deb and I both make community service a priority, and I'm grateful for the support system my family provides. It affords us the opportunity to teach our kids the value of community service, which ironically is exactly how I was taught the value of community service, Lynn. I was in, it was ingrained to me at a very young age. As I said, I grew up in this town, and from a very early age, I watched my parents set the bar for community service, and it was a fairly high one at that. For example, my mom served as a town meeting member, a school committee member, and a library expansion or remodel committee member. Um, for those that have lived in town less than 20 years, that was the first library edition, not the one you see now. My dad was also super active. He served as a town meeting member, he served as a school committee member, a finance committee member, and one that's particularly near and dear to me, a Shrewsbury Housing Authority member. So, um, like I said, they set the bar pretty high and I'm just trying to do my best to fill it. So you've served on the Shrewsbury Housing Authority for 10 years. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, I know you've been involved in many other community initiatives. Would you like to elaborate on that? I'd love to. I've been super blessed and super fortunate to have the opportunity to serve in a lot of community initiatives and a lot of community service. Um, there's a few that come to mind that people might be familiar with. For example, I was a founding member of a group called SOAR, Shrewsbury Oil Assistance Relief. For those that may not be familiar with Shrewsbury Oil Relief, it was created to provide a safety net for the winter months for Shrewsbury residents struggling to make their oil bills. So rather than run out of oil in the middle of the night and have pipes burst, we were able to um, develop this protocol where we could come to their house and do a support mechanism for them. I'm so proud to say it's helped literally hundreds and hundreds of families. I've also been involved in a lot of municipal projects and committees. Currently, I serve on the Beale School Reuse Committee. Most people know that about a year ago, we elected to put a new school, the new Beale School, up off of Lake Street. Um, I'm on a committee that's determining the disposition of the existing Beale School and the existing Beale lot um, with several other municipal leaders. And one of the things we're exploring for that particular building is also the possibility of making the Beale School senior housing as well. In addition to committees like that, I've served on multiple charitable committees. I've been a strong financial supporter of several initiatives in town, like the library uh, capital campaign, for example. Um, additionally, I've been an elected town meeting member since way back in 1989, over 25 years ago. And finally, something I'm really proud of. Um, most people don't know this, but I lost my best friend to ovarian cancer uh, about five years ago now, and it had such a profound effect on me. I felt so helpless that I wanted to do something. I actually started my own charitable 501-3C organization. I named it after her. Um, I'm so proud that in just three years we've raised over $30,000 to help women battling ovarian cancer. We take no overhead, no money. It's just myself and her daughter that manage the foundation. And this money goes to these women to help use it for things like supportive care, groceries, travel, transportation, rent. All the while, they're focusing on the most important thing to them, which is the battle in front of them. Wow, that's really great. So all that certainly helps us to understand your dedication to Shrewsbury and your ability to advocate for causes that are important to you. Next, let's discuss the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. I'm guessing not everyone knows exactly what the Shrewsbury Housing Authority does. Could you explain? <laughs> You're not going out on a limb with that, <laughs> yes. I've been doing this for 10 years, and there are many, many people I run into on a daily basis that don't know what we do. 
Um, well, for starters, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority oversees more than 235 um, units of elderly housing spread across multiple properties around town. We have over 25 family units and over 170 Section 8 vouchers. For people maybe not familiar with that vernacular, that's where the state or the federal government subsidizes um, uh, somebody's rent in, in a property that we don't manage. In fact, Lynn, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority is considered to be one of the best run housing authorities in the state. And I'm running for re-election because I believe I have the skills and the experience to keep it that way. For those that don't know what the board does, we're a policy and oversight board, not an operational one. Our defined charter as a board is to provide policy and oversight leadership while advocating for current and future housing. We're responsible for the management and oversight of a multi-million dollar budget. I know some of the residents have been a bit confused during this campaign. I've gotten a lot of questions about, there's been a lot of discussion about adding an element of social work to this board. Many folks may not realize this, but we actually have a full-time dedicated social worker on staff. Um, her name is Shirley, and I think she does a terrific job. In fact, one of the highlights of serving on the board for me is every month I get to see her monthly report and see how many residents she's helping with what problems and how she's bringing those things to resolution. And for me, that's really kind of something special. Wow, that's, that's great. So that really helps us understand what the Shrewsbury Housing Authority does. So could you talk specifically about what you've accomplished while you've been on the board? Sure, I'd love to, um, but it's not just me. It's been my privilege to work in collaboration with my fellow board members for the last 10 years, as well as municipal, state, and federal government. Um, and this time, we've accomplished so much. We, I mean, just the list could go on and on, but if I had to pick the top five or something, the first one that comes to mind is we launched um, five new family units on Ridgeland Road, which is right off of South Quinsigamond. This was a project done in collaboration with the Mass Department of Mental Health. It was literally the first project of its kind in over 20 years. Um, we launched a new website. Prior to me being on the board, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority never had a website. And this was a project that I got to personally oversee given my background and skill set. The site instantly became an extremely effective tool for keeping our community informed about our prod programs, our wait list, and things like that. Um, another thing a lot of people don't realize is we run a subsidy for the Council on Aging Van, the bus that works out of the Senior Center. Shrewsbury Housing Authority funds about $10,000 of that bus every year. Um, another thing, we have a long wait list, and everyone knows that we always maintain near 100%, or people may not know, but we generally maintain near 100% occupancy list but we always strive to give local and military preference to that wait list. So our um, organic residents of Shrewsbury and our vets always go to the top of the list, and that's something really important to me. Um, we've modernized our systems and our security. This is an ongoing project, as security always is. Um, again, this goes back to what I do for a living, um, but this program has involved physical security, security guards, advanced monitoring systems, video. Um, I've been fortunate enough to draw on my security and systems experience to help assist the executive director with this project, and it's always going to be ongoing. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, the tower on North Quinsig is uh, something we aggressively market the roof to cell phone carriers, and by doing so, we're able to rent cell towers on the roof of that to draw down on the funds we need to pull in from state and federal government. Um, but perhaps most importantly, because how we do all these things and these creative revenue management, we've been able to do all of this, and as I said, much, much more, without taking a single dime from the town. In fact, since I've been on the board, we've returned to the town nearly a half million dollars. Wow. So previously, you described the board's role as policy, oversight, and advocacy. Could you expand a little bit more about advocacy? I'd love to. That's really, for me, the best part of the job. As I said, given that I've lived in this community my whole life, many of this town's seniors were my neighbors, my friends' parents, school teachers, parishioners, shopkeepers while I was growing up. So it's been such a great privilege to be able to advocate for those who rely on the services of the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. I have an example, a little short story. Just the other day, um, I was at Francis Gardens and my friend Mario came up to me and told me how happy he is that he's able to organize events in the community room and work the kitchen there. This was all as a result of the policy that the board created. I remember advocating for him and that policy in a meeting six months prior and now every time I go there, as soon as I walk into the room, he uh, makes sure he hands me a hot cup of coffee. I usually take it and smile even though I'm a tea drinker. <laughs> So, what qualities do you feel are most important to be effective on the board? 
That's a really good question. I guess if I had to think about it, I'd say that there are probably four critical elements to being on the board or to being effective in this role, certainly. Uh, as I just mentioned with my story about Mario, compassion is the first one. You have to be able to want to advocate tirelessly for the folks in the community. Um, second, definitely is financial acumen. You need the business acumen and the business skill to responsibly manage a multi-million dollar budget, as I said, which I've been doing routinely as part of my day job for the last 25 years. Collaboration. This one is key. Doing this job effectively also requires collaboration from the rest of the board as well as town, city, and state officials. I've been working with our board for years and I'm very proud to say I have the support of the majority of my board. The last um, is probably the most critical, which is experience. Again, I have a cute little story, not cute, but interesting story I'd love to share with you here. Um, as you all know, we had a federal government shutdown back in January. Well, right in the middle of the shutdown, we had a bit of an emergency at one of our buildings, our federal building, of course. Mm -hmm. This is the tower on South Quinsig behind Moe's, where we house approximately 100 residents. Well, we had a pipe burst on the top floor. It actually caused a flood, trickled down all five floors. It's the big, tall building. So in this case, the normal protocol would have been for our executive director, Kelly, to call HUD because it's a federal building, not a state one. Well, of course, the feds weren't answering their phones. So given the absence of federal government, and since I was the chair of the housing authority, I had to work closely with Kelly, our executive director, to ensure the safety of our residents. Fortunately, we were able to get our residents relocated, get the appropriate cleanup measures begun quickly, get the cleanup folks engaged, begin the repair process. Luckily, based on my experience and my relationships, it enabled us to do this all very quickly and move to a really expedient resolution. I still then have a handwritten note that I received from one of the tenants of the tower thanking me for the board's swift action during that time. I mean, it's something I really treasure. Like the cliche says, there's really no substitute for experience. I'm running because I believe I have demonstrated all four of these skills. Compassion, business acumen, collaboration, and experience for the last 10 years. So if you were to look back over the last 10 years, is there a particular favorite part of your role on the board that you've enjoyed? Um, that's a really good question. As I said, I, I love the advocacy. It's probably the favorite part of the job. But for me, I guess the favorite part of being on the housing authority is really about the relationships. It's about the effective working relationships I fostered with not only the board, but as I said, other municipal leaders, some who've become close friends, but it's also the relationships I've developed with the residents. It's funny, kinda, it's good in kind of a funny way that in a nice turn of events, advocacy can sometimes become friendship. As a lot of folks know, um, my older brother Mark died last year. He was very well known in town, he was a very popular guy. It was very sudden, very tragic, very unexpected. Lynn, when it occurred, I obviously had a huge outpouring from family and friends, but I was shocked at the response from the residents of Shrewsbury Housing Authority. I had people calling me, sending cards, sending food, calling Kelly, asking for my home phone number, my home address, all with the outpour. So it's crazy. I've learned so much from the residents and I've developed so many great relationships. So I guess the best part of it for me has been the relationships. Well, what are some of the new goals that you would hope to accomplish if you were reelected to the board? Uh, good question. I guess I'd want to continue the good work we've been doing, and I'd want to do that as seamlessly as possible. No ramp up, no learning curve, just come into the May meeting, no different than the April meeting. I want to continue to enhance the properties. There's always a long list of upgrades and enhancements we're working on. I want to enhance the living experience for the residents. We want to continue to explore new policies and enhancements that will benefit the whole community. That's part of our charter and our mission. To provide our residents a clean, safe, well-maintained living environment, and we do that for the whole community. I want to continue to be more inclusionary. This is also something we've made great progress in, but it's a work in progress just like security. I want to continue to develop our website so that it's a resource for the residents. I hear all the time what a great resource the website is. Um, for example, on the website, we have links to resources like Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services, Shrewsbury Council on Aging, Shrewsbury Commission on Disabilities, Elder Services of Worcester. I know there's been some confusion about what information has been available on the site, but it's, um, it's always expanding, we're always offering more. We want to constantly grow and enhance our resource pool. And of course, we want to continue to develop means of affordable housing. In fact, just this week, I've been on the phone with the selectmen and attending a selectmen's meeting about advocating for the planning department's new affordable housing trust. This is a program that the planning department has worked in conjunction with the Shrewsbury Housing Authority that it, uh, in close collaboration that is now going to the selectmen for approval, which I'll advocate for them. And then it's going on to be, I believe, if the selectmen approve it on the annual town meeting ballot in May, and I'll advocate for it there as well. Wow. 
Well, Paul, this really has been great. I think it's so important for the residents of Shrewsbury to get an in-depth understanding of the board, your accomplishments, and your bid for re-election. So do you have any final thoughts? Uh, yes, I do. First of all, I want to thank you for your time. I know you're busy realtor, woman about town, doing a lot of things, but I appreciate you sitting down and talking with me. Um, most people know we've known each other for a long time, so I appreciate that. I want to thank uh, Shrewsbury Media Connection for hosting us. I think it's important, as you said, that people learn. And I guess I really want the residents of Shrewsbury to know that I'm running for re-election because I believe serving the seniors and less fortunate members of our community for the last 10 years has taught me how critical it is that this position be held by someone who is compassionate and has demonstrated proven, balanced leadership. I have gained the trust and the support of those who have seen me work hard, and I believe I've been an effective advocate for Shrewsbury Housing Authority. I'm honored to have the support of the majority of my board, as well as the unanimous support of our Board of Selectmen, as well as the support of our state rep, Hannah Kane, and our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. And I would ask you, the resident and the voter of Shrewsbury, for your vote on Tuesday, May 7th. Thank you very much.